Today we are going to consider the biological causal factors for bipolar disorder. With regards to biological causal factors, many researchers have centered on bipolar 1 disorder. So the causal factors will be discussed keeping bipolar 1 disorder in mind. Genetic influences. First thing we are going to consider is family studies. With regards to fam family studies, there are higher genetic evidences of bipolar 1 than unipolar disorders with regards to genetic loading. 8 to 10 percent of first degree relatives are expected to have this condition, whereas first degree relatives are also at risk for unipolar depression of the atypical type wherein there is excessive eating or sleeping. So, here we are seeing a family pedigree chart so in this family pedigree chart you can see that a circle represents a female and a square represents a male a square with the stripes represents bipolar disorder whereas solid squares or spheres represents unipolar depression with regards to this family pedigree chart we notice that bipolar disorder having a diagnosis here at the beginning seems to run in the family along the family tree we can also notice that a few family members also seem to have unipolar disorder. The next thing is twin studies. Twin studies demonstrate of higher concordance rates between uh, you know identical twins rather than fraternal twins. Kelso in the year 1997 also demonstrated that 60% of monozygotic twins showed a higher concordance rate for a bipolar disorder over just 12% of dizygotic twins. One key study was done by Mac Giffen and colleagues in the year 2003, wherein 67% of monozygotic twins with bipolar disorder had a co-twin with bipolar or unipolar disorder, whereas only 19% had a you know uh, had a bipolar disorder when you come to a dizygotic twin. With regards to this, we come into the next con next uh, you know aspect that is genetic liability for mania. With regards to mania, you need to understand that the brain regions, the neurotransmitters, and everything seems to be quite different. So thus, research also conclusively points out that with regards to mania, the genetic liability for developing a mania might also be a little distinct compared to that of depression. Thus, on the whole, we can say that there is genetic loading, which is a to 90 percent with regards to bipolar disorders which is the highest among you know any other psychiatric condition but however with regards to liabilities for mania and depression there could be differences linkage analysis and association studies. Such studies demonstrate no consistent support. However, there are remarks of bipolar disorders to be polygenic in nature involving several genetic interactions rather than isolated genes. Next, we are going to discuss about neurochemical factors. Remember the monoamine theory of depression. Monoamine theory of depression calls out that depression was due to an absolute or relative depletion of two neurotransmitters of the monoamine class that are serotonin and norepinephrine. Serotonin and norepinephrine are collectively you know re uh, useful for certain important functions like behavioral activity, it also regulates stress, it also helps in emotional expression, it also is important for vegetative functions like sleep, appetite and arousal. So this was further extended to bipolar disorder that if these neurotransmitters in deficiencies could cause depression can excesses lead to mania so let's see how to you know conclude these findings with regards to neurochemical factors firstly norepinephrine is involved in bipolar disorder so in bipolar disorder norepinephrine is noticed to be at a higher activity in several brain regions thus it arouses the sympathetic nervous system Norepinephrine is related to certain functions like heart rate, blood pressure, alertness, arousal, speeds up reaction time, it regulates mood and concentration. Next comes serotonin. Serotonin is observed to be the same both in bipolar mania as well as in the depressive phase and it regulates mood, social behavior, appetite, sleep and sexual desire. Next we are moving on to dopamine. With regards to dopamine, it's high in several brain areas. 
It is involved in motor control, motivation, arousal, reinforcement, reward, sexual gratification. High dopamine, dopamine activity may be also related to manic symptoms of hyperactivity, grandiosity and euphoria. With regards to dopamine, we need to consider that dopamine hypothesis was something that you know led to a lot of research with regards to stimulants. So when stimulants like cocaine and amphetamines had been infused at high doses it was noticed that the individuals had had manic like behaviors thus when such individuals were given lithium for example a mood stabilizer they had you know anti manic prop it, lithium generally has anti manic properties which in turn led to to a decrease in such manic like behaviors you need to consider that lithium directly acts on lowering the dopamine in the body so which means when stimulants increase dopamine and lithium reduces dopamine lithium may be used as a key drug for bipolar disorder as a mood stabilizer so dopamine seems to be one of the key neurotransmitters with regards to bipolar disorder Next thing we're going to look at is abnormalities in hormonal regulatory system beginning with the HPA axis. HPA axis is one axis that we have often discussed. So in this also we need to understand that the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal is important with regards to cortisol. So corticotropin releasing hormone is released by the hypothalamus which in turn triggers the pituitary to release the adrenocorticotropic hormone which in turn triggers the adrenal gland to release cortisol. When cortisol levels are increased in the blood generally there is a negative feedback which is sent to the brain in normal individuals however there is absence of such negative feedback in case of bipolar 1 disorder especially in the depression phase which leads to maintenance of mood symptoms next thing that we're going to look at is dexamethasone this is another thing that we have already discussed in unipolar disorders but however for recall dexamethasone is a powerful suppressor of plasma cortisol in normal individuals this fails entirely to suppress cortisol or fails to sustain its suppression in depressed individuals such abnormalities are also observed in bipolar depression however such abnormalities have mixed evidences for manic episodes and require further investigation the next thing we're gonna look at is the hypothalamus pituitary thyroid axis the hypothalamus pituitary thyroid axis also has a very unique contribution with with regards to bipolar disorder the hypothalamus releases the thyroid thyrotropin releasing hormone which in turn triggers the pituitary to release the thy uh, thyroid stimulating hormone which in turn uh, triggers the thyroid gland to release the thyroid hormones so with regards to bipolar disorder there are abnormalities of functions associated to changes in mood many patients with bipolar disorders have significant changes in the function of this axis and it is also noticed that administration of thyroid hormones allows antidepressants to work better however with regards to manic episodes such research evidence such as of thyroid hormones being implicated in the precipitation of manic episodes so it is you know clear that when thyroid hormones are given alongside antidepressants for an individual who has depression it works well but when it's given for an individual in a you know who is who is having a bipolar disorder in the in the depressive phase then it could even trigger a manic episode so let's see how so with regards to this we have to understand beta adrenergen first so with regards to beta adrenergen it is ba it basically binds with epinephrine and related substance that activates the receptor sites so in hyperthyroidism what happens is beta adrenergic activity seems to be extremely high which in turn leads to the arousal of the sympathetic nervous system which in turn leads to manic like behavior so this beta adrenergic activity serves as a mediator for manic like behavior in a very indirect manner so when you look at bipolar 1 disorder say the person is in the major depressive episode and the client has never gone through a manic episode and say the antidepressants are not really working so the doctor may prescribe 
thyroid hormones for the effects of antidepressants to you know show up this thyroid hormones can lead to hypothyroidism which in turn could lead to ma a manic episode so here hypothyroidism could lead to a manic episode because beta adrenergic activity becomes extremely high in hypothyroidism which in turn leads to manic like behavior thus we can say that hypothyroidism may be more related to depression whereas hyperthyroidism may be more related to mania neurophysiological and neuroanatomical differences so with regards to neurophysiological and neuroanatomical differences we need to understand that there are variations in brain glucose metabolic rate and has been evidenced through PET scans. However, scarce evidence for manic episodes have been recorded because it's really hard to put a person going through manic states under such scans. So many research evidence states of lower activation in the left prefrontal cortex with regards to depression. Mania regards other regions of prefrontal cortex with higher activity. That Thus, we can say that there are shifting patterns of brain activity during depression, mania and other normal states. Other studies point out of other brain regions, namely the deficits in prefrontal cortex as well as anterior cingulate cortex activity. So when there are deficits in the prefrontal and the anterior uh, cingulate uh, cortex activity, that seems to be neuro neuropsychological deficits like deficits in problem solving, planning, working memory, shifting of attention and sustained attention on cognitive tasks. With regards to other subcortical regions you need to consider the basal ganglia and amygdala so basal ganglia and amygdala as you can see seem to be enlarged in individuals with a bipolar disorder and also we need to consider that basal ganglia amygdala and thalamus seem to be at a higher activity in individuals with bipolar disorder and all of these regions are involved in emotional processing and may influence the maintenance of mood symptoms with regards to the hippocampus Campus, we need to understand that hippocampus appears absolutely normal in terms of bipolar depression. There is also dysregulation in the frontal limbic activation and it has been observed and may be involved with, with exaggerated emotions with no adequate ability of processing, judgment or reasoning. However, such evidences are inconclusive and requires further investigations. The next thing that we are going to discuss is sleep and other biological rhythms. There are disturbances in biological rhythms with regards to bipolar disordered patients. Patients with, you know, who are in the manic episode kind of sleep very little either they sleep by choice but it is not because of insomnia as such however in the depressed episode they tend to sleep a lot and may experience hypersomnia also you can find that such individuals find it really hard to adapt to changes in their daily cycles for example trying to you know resettle their work by working in a rotational shift will be very hard in also seasonal changes wherein there, there is daylight savings time which requires changes in their cycles might be really hard for individuals with a bipolar disorder to adapt also we need to consider that these are you know a key areas which require further investigations so that we can get a clearer picture of biological underpinnings of why such biological rhythm changes could cause such manic episodes or could trigger a disorder to occur so here comes to an end of bi biological causal factors with regards to bipolar disorders. I hope you all understood it. Kindly notify if you need further clarifications. Thank you.